I am in love with this boat. As y'all may know, I'm the proud owner of one of the sickest mini bass boats called the Yintin. But I wanted to branch out of my comfort zone and get into kayak fishing. So I got myself this gorgeous feel-free Lure 11.5 that has a fancy seat, pedal drive system, and tons of room to stand. All that's left to do is to wreak havoc on the water with our new vessel. There's another one. That's not, that's not small, that's not small. Our verse of the day comes from Dave Y52, and it is from Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because rarely would you even die for a good man. But the love of God is shown to us by the fact that Christ died for each of us while we were his enemies. We're out here fishing with my boy, Ethan. And bro, can you tell us how many subs are we at right now? 90.1 thousand. Y'all, last week we were at like 88 thousand or something. We are flying. Now you might notice I don't have a life vest on me. Under normal conditions, I would not dare to even step foot into the water without one. Also, it sets a bad example for you guys. But the only reason I'm comfortable fishing without one today is we're in a max of like four feet of water. And I got my boy Ethan here ready to jump in the water in case like a bird attacks me or something. Three, two, one. Oh, and goodbye all right i'm going home but you guys can probably tell that my finger is still indeed broken there's a chance that we'll break it all the more today and this is indeed my maiden voyage like i did not off camera take this thing on the water i don't even know if it's gonna float there could be a hidden hole somewhere here goes nothing <laughs> uh wait <laughs> So these are called scupper holes and they will let water in, but it's actually to keep the buoyancy of the boat. Okay, we're in the water now. Whoa, all right. This is fascinating. Also, go ahead and drop a name for this new boat. I'm thinking like maybe a yin yak would be a cool name, but you guys are way more creative than me. So go comment it right now. One thing I wanna do is actually try this pedal system real quick. I've never owned a single kayak that you could both stand on and pedal. Just pull that and that. Oh wait, no, I think I just pushed down, yeah. See that rudder in the back? We want it. Drop it in the water. Oh yeah. Just hit that drift real quick. <laughs> the kayak's so fancy that it can reverse? What? But here's the stability test. Probably shouldn't jump. We're gonna do a, a complete 360 walk around. Yeah. All right, I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna lean on the side. I have my phone in my pocket, but check this out. <gasps> but it is insanely easy to just maneuver on this thing. If I wanna grab something from the back, I just boom, got it. You guys might be wondering, oh Ryan, why would you even need a kayak if you have such an awesome boat like the Yintin? Well, there are places that you can't really put a boat in it's either just too small or the access is impossible. So this vessel will allow us to go just to the skinniest of waters, the shallowest spots, and explore some new potential honey holes. But uh, I'm thinking, because it's so cloudy right now, I kinda wanna throw some top water. This is the evergreen gizmo that you guys recommended I get from ACM Tackle. It's a cicada looking top water and apparently it's really good for smallmouth. Uh, it's kind of wild that I don't need to pick up my paddle once. I can do so much with this pedal drive system. All right, coming up on this, we'll slow down a little bit. First cast, we'll slingshot this in there. Woo, wow. Okay, so I mean, I'm comfortable walking around this thing. The only thing is, what if I hook into a giant fish? How is it gonna handle that? You know, that's my concern. Because of my finger, I can't throw bait casters for like, I don't know, one more week. There has to be some fish in here. Just slow, oh. Come on. Yeah, Ethan's hooked up. We're racing over to him. All right, this will test the speed. How fast can this thing go? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, it looks like a big old bluegill. Dude, I'm so happy for you. Good stuff. That is a beaut of a fish. Like, I would love to catch one of those right now. I wanna catch a bluegill real bad because I have not <laughs> landed a single one in like eight, nine months. It's really sad for how much, you know, I actually talk about this type of fish. That cast was really sad too. Fish, have mercy on me. I am an injured man fishing on a boat I've never fished on. But on the off chance that something is 
Hungry? Oh, I got nipped. Something super small though. Can I stand one-legged on this thing? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, why women live longer than men. <laughs> Anybody hungry for gizmo? I'm trying to find out how this boat will handle a fish fight. Because I fished many stand-up paddle boards in the past. And the one issue I have with those is they're so light that it's almost impossible to fight a fish correctly. But you know, this thing has some decent heft to it. Call me the most impatient angler ever, but we're gonna switch lures. I wanna throw a beetle spin. Practically, a beetle spin is just like a baby spinner bait. That's all it is. I don't even know why it's called a beetle spin. Does not look like a beetle. If you told me a year ago that, you know, I would be standing on this right now, I wouldn't believe you. God has been so gracious and has blessed this channel a whole lot. You know, it is his channel. Everything I own belongs to God. You might be sitting and watching this video right now and be like, man, I hope to one day have a boat or a kayak or just that fishing rod he's holding. Don't be too hard on yourself because you know, with time, things change like crazy. I'm only 20 years old and who knows what's gonna happen in the next couple of years, you know? This is a highly pressured lake. So maybe this wasn't the best place to take our new boat for the first voyage. But this is a lake that, for some weird reason, every single time I come here, I always catch a fish. We're resorting to a true classic, the curly tail grub. This is a dangerous lure that should only be broken out when you can't catch anything else. On tough days, sometimes you just need a downsize and you never know, a big old bass could end up munching this. Oh, oh, there's a fish. Oh, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Get in here. It's a baby crappie. Yes. This is my first crappie of the year. Praise the Lord. You know what? I'm hungry. I didn't even have lunch today. Ah, I'm kidding. <laughs> first fish in our new vessel that has yet to be named. I'll see you later, buddy. Phew. I was fishing for a whole hour and nothing was biting, so I was getting worried. I was like, uh... This is not good. The skunk is officially out of the boat. I think it's time to reward ourselves by throwing something bigger. Here's what I'm thinking. Because it's on the colder side today, these bass are probably lurking a little deeper than normal. So I got a Ned rig with a full-size bubblegum pink Senko on. Call me crazy, but this is actually one of my confident lures. Oh, I caught a catfish on this stump last week. Can we perhaps pull a little largey out of here. I'm convinced there are no largies in this lake. Let me tell y'all, this right here is innovation. You've already traveled probably half a mile by using this method. I'm getting a leg workout. Ethan's getting an arm workout. It's a win-win. Oh, Ethan just lost a two pound bass. That might be an indicator that we are in the right spot now. I just want to catch a bluegill. Like, I would rather catch a bluegill than a three pound bass right now because, I mean, a three pound bass, I can probably catch that any day I want, but a bluegill, you see, this species has eluded me for far too long this year. I also think because this vessel does not have a name yet, that's kind of like adding to the okay fishing right now. <laughs> I am convinced that next time when you guys have come up with an awesome name for this boat, the fish won't stand a chance. I fished around for hours on end without a single fish. So now we are very high up in this lake and I think I'm gonna throw a Texas rigged crawl. Oh, I got a fish, I got a bass, I got a bass. Yes! Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh that's a big one! That's a solid one! Nope. No, he's got me wrapped. He's got me wrapped. Oh, he's still on. He's, <gasps> I just broke off. I just lost a three, four pounder. <laughs> my leader broke. Maybe my knot broke. Ah, uh, well, praise the Lord. That was a fun fight. I, I let, Let's say I practically caught that fish, right? Wow, that was a smart bass. He just took me straight into the weeds. I think the yak handled it pretty well though. I mean, of course we didn't land the fish. However, where there's one, there's probably another one. I knew if I pulled too hard, it would just snap and that's exactly what I did. I should have just let him just try and dig, but wow, there's another one. There, there he is. Okay, there's a lot of bass here. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, no, 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 this guy's crazy. <laughs> Hello, buddy. <laughs> I've lost too many fish today to not catch you. Goodbye, Bess. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. That's not, that's not small. That's not small. Hey, this might be the same one I lost. Oh, uh, no, he's a little. Maybe one or two. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell. All right, official two pounder. Welcome in the bowl. All right, that was like literally my second cast in there. So unfortunately, I haven't caught a single bluegill yet which is so sad. I can probably stay out for like another hour or so and catch more bass, but Ethan, he wants dinner. I want dinner. And so, you know, today we did a lot of micro fishing and next week it's actually gonna be quite the opposite. I'm talking about big, big baits. Mm -hmm.